Back to what's on the bench. Trojan again. Okay, so report on the lubricator clack. I don't know if you can see, but the oil that is running and set down the outside of the chimney tells the story. Um, the new clack body that Tom made has worked beautifully. She oils a lot. She's better than nothing. Now the next game will be to trim the oil pump back. It is the standard poly lubricator. It's very touchy, so it's gonna take be a bit hit and miss. But it's lubricating and we've tested it a few times, running the pot dry, filling it back up, and it just carries on. So I think that is lubricator problems. Touch wood solved. Which leads us on to the next. So the injector isn't the most reliable thing in the world. Not helped by two things, I think. One, obviously the hot water from the tank. Saddle tank, the water gets very hot. There is a lot of insulation under there. Got the lagging and the lead on the boiler. And then there's two layers of uh, insulation between the tank and the boiler cladding. Not a lot we can do about that. I had thought about trying to rig up some sort of radiator heat exchange thing under the running board but I don't know if that'll be enough I don't know if I can get enough pipe length in there Any, either way the other thing that doesn't help is the boiler clack more or less doesn't all the time again like every other clack on her slowly failing or failed None of them have failed to the point of the boiler just dumping itself. But they, other than that, now the lubricator clack, none of them, shall we say, properly seal. They are all, of course, brass and commercial, which isn't great. Right, so we're going to, if I pivot around. Also, see what I mean. Ping that up. So. Oh, and don't be alarmed, she's not actually hanging that far off the bench. The wheels are, the wheelbase is definitely six inches forward of the edge of the bench and I'll spin them back round when I'm done before you tell me off. So in the back head here, uh, the hand pump is under the floor, top of the cutout, she goes into clack this side. That clack has been replaced. I'm dubious about it, but at the very least, the clack on top of the pump is holding. The, pump doesn't feed back which is great how do i know it's not feeding back because it comes via this sight glass so i can see this sight glass is the boil is the tank level but off the bottom of it just because it's a convenient place to connect it is where the hand pump feeds from so yes while you're hand pumping it looks like you've got an empty tank because it just <laughs> gone but the injector clack is this one bottom right uh, which is again, you can see they're both brass. My cab is a state. All the controls are filthy. The back end is rusty and caked in lime scale. We know you don't have to tell me. But none of that affects our operation. The valves are all nice and free. The whistle is the next problem after that there clack. Because weirdly that started kind of behaving again. I don't know why I haven't touched it. So, I don't know if I'll move you or if I'll just stop and start it, but I'm gonna whip the door off, take the clack off. And yes, you have to take the door off to take the clack off because they're so close, it's more or less touching the hinge. Um, even the one on the other side, to get it past the door, you have to, have to take the door off. But the door is only on two bolts, top and bottom, which are easy to just um, socket them out. The clack does come out fairly easily. You do have to kind of nudge the injector steam pipe out of the way, but it does come off and we're going to get to that. Break on helps, doesn't it? Right. So, I'm 
Just having the ratchet on the right way helps as well. At least until you get that far. One. Not very. They're not very long bolts. And they're very rarely done up all that tight. And as simple as that, the door is off. Right, so. Clack. So I need a. Yeah, one of those. Let's. Rescue the spaniels. Which one do I reckon it is? It was close. Again, it's not quite there. It might be there. Nope. Okay, not that set of spanners. There's helicopter. There we go. A ten mil spanner, so I'm not the right size, but it worked. I'm not let like this nut go too far because it will shoot under. No, it hasn't. That's fine. Right. So next is to try and persuade this to unscrew, which was easier than I thought. So. Out we come. Good job that didn't matter if it fell. Right, so there's the clack. A nice little piece of fee on the end. It will unwind because we need to replace that anyway. Right, so over to the vise. We'll take the top off. The ball is at least free. But yeah, we're gonna stick it in the vise, crack the top off, and have a better look. I'm hoping you might be able to see down the hole from this angle, but we'll find out. So let's dab it up. Undo the lid and throw the spanner away. Take the top cap off. I don't know what C means. I mean, see for clack, cap. I don't know. Right, so what have we got? <clears throat> the ball looks okay. If you can actually see this on camera or not. There we go. Oh, it focused as well. The ball looks okay. Make sure there's maybe a ding on it. So I might need a new ball. But we can measure that up while we're here. So we'll just get a parts box in for this. Now it's a clump with your in the cab of your engine as well, so they can go in there. Right, let's have a look in there at the seat. Again more PTFE to come out. Right. I'm just gonna go under a brighter light. Bear with me. Right, we're back. So you can't really see it because of where the light is over there. But the seat's not bad. But it's questionable whether it's got a chip out of it. Maybe there. Looks funny. And over there, maybe. 
I mean, either way, we are going to clean that up before we put it back together. Um, I mean, I think it's brass. But that ready colour is leading me, me to believe it might not be. Um, either way, there's a nice bit of... Is that... Is that a scale? No, it's not. That's just the metal. So, yeah, we'll clean this up, replace the PTFE, skim the seat, and stick it back together. Um, yeah. Right, so we'll put the drill chuck in. As always, we'll give that a wipe over. Okay, so let's find the million car. actually it's either of those that one's a bit small for the old oh, there we go so it is a it is that size there I need so let's get this somewhere in the ballpark Somewhere close like that, aren't we? There are probably better ways of doing this, and you're already, and I'm probably going to get a comment or two. You don't all see something, you don't see all the comments I get, but usually they're telling me I'm doing it wrong. Right, so we will stick a bit of this on the end of it. to help things along. We're happy that's still running true. We're gonna whack that in, lock it down, wind it out a little bit. This is literally gonna need the lightest touch to skim it, I think. Right. There we go, it's bitten. can see it's cut so that might have been enough that's not great uh right so chucking let's have a quick look right so you can see it look at that for a seat We've got quite a nice finish on it, so we're going to get the ball. I'm just going to blow it. Right, 
Let me forget that's there. All right, so the ball is in the hole. Okay. So my quick dirty test before I give this a D scale. Look at the stage of that is to blow in there and see what comes out. Now there is a bit of a leak there as we expected the old ball. So I'm gonna get some new balls. And we're gonna tap a new ball in there just to seat it. And see what we get. There might be some muck on it. You never know. I mean, it's not bad. But it is leaking under breath. So, we do need to seat that ball, which means I'm going to need some new balls. Uh, which is when you'll pick this up.